amazing. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the decision made or the recommendation made by the National Economic Council mm -hmm. to dump the National Social Register compiled on the former president, Muhammad Buhari, for lacking credibility. The council, after a five-hour meeting led by Vice President Kashim Shatima at the State House on Thursday, proposed the implementation of a cash transfer program for states based on their social registers and the cash reward policy for public servants for six months. While speaking with journalists, the governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Chukuma Soludo, said the so-called national register lacked integrity and that any national or federal programs as such should be delivered via the constituent government. At the uh, council today, there was almost near unanimity among members that there is a big question mark about the integrity of the so-called National Social Register. Uh, people have questions about how those names in the register were brought about. The integrity test is what is missing with that um, register. This is stress testing it, and we think that we need to go down back to the drawing board. And if you are delivering any such national or federal program from Abuja, it needs to be delivered via the constituent uh, governments that are there at the roots, and each will now generate using their own formal and informal mechanisms to generate a register that is comprehensive, that is, um, I mean, meets certain criteria that you can stress test, and you can call out the people in the village, and everybody will confirm that these are the vulnerable people. Very great ideas. But you know, Nigerians have reacted. This is from uh, Adebayo, who wrote, So what happens to the trillions of Naira that has been shared using this register? How do we trace them? Who do we hold responsible? Buhari? What's next after knowing it lacks credibility? So many questions, man. Then Obia Julie wrote, So heads should be rolling from the last administration, yes? Because children were fed while there was lockdown around the world during COVID and transfers, allegedly made to the poorest of humans. If you can't bring them to book, then it's nothing. Well, another person called for the arrest of the humanitarian um, affairs minister, Sadia Umaru Farouk, and that, uh, you know, a serious government would have arrested her because the fraud occurred under her ministry. This, man, this is Ural. He wrote, arrest the humanitarian minister. Um, Ayo, I'm coming to you. I don't know if you saw that uh, breakdown by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs only in April showing concrete data. It appeared to be concrete yes. data. So, so what happened? Yes, that's a big question. What happened? Yes. So before we go forward in terms of, oh, well, let's move it to the subnationals in terms of the implementation of the um, investment infrastructure fund or the conditional cash transfer through government, let's look back at what happened with the previous National Social Register, which the governors are now saying lacks integrity. At that NEC meeting, there were some governors who are serving their second term. Why didn't they speak out in the first, um, during the last More administration? Yes. When the government said that they had, because they helped in developing the names on that register, why didn't they cry out at that time? Why is it convenient under a new administration or when you're at different points to then say, oh, that lacked integrity? We need to also question those governors who are serving their second term, who didn't speak out during that time. Could also Professor Soludo now, who is saying, well, speaking from that next, to say that, well, let it be implemented because they have a true, a better picture and a better grasp of the people that they are working with and are able to confirm the names on the register. And Eleron had said that even beyond the governors, let's go down, even further down to the local government. Because they are not ghosts. If money was paid, they should, we should be able to identify people who benefited from the National Social Register and the conditional cash transfer in the last administration, unfortunately. Yes. And the importance of, of investigating the previous administration is to avoid the, um, a future occurrence. When we're speaking about the Abia State um, governor saying that he had um, been able to identify ghost workers, over 2,000 on their database, what people were saying that that was good, but the next step was to investigate who were they paying money to. I bring that example to bear here because it's the same thing with what's going on now. What happens usually is that when there are cases like, oh, that didn't work, people don't know who was giving money, investigations are not concluded. So we, there's no punishment. So it means that 
the, like we, I was saying yesterday, the punishment for bad behavior is just let's sweep you under the carpet, let's say we are sorry and let's move on. No, we can't continue to move on. We need to investigate what really happened yes. under this same, um, this same party, APC, APC, and where those monies went to. And if there's anyone who is culpable, let them be put to the book. Absolutely. Heads must roll, Dr. Bati. Well, let, let's just look at what the uh, knowledge base on this matter is. I was citing the point earlier on that Yowa uh, Akpera, that's the name of the coordinator of what is called the National Social Safety Net uh, Coordination uh, Office, NACOS, mm. which was established in 2016. His job was to manage the process and to ensure the collection of data mm -hmm. and all of that. And it was in that process that Nigeria came up with the National Social Register. That social register is an aggregate of registers prepared by the states. By the state governors. Through Absolutely, their yes. ministries of, national, of uh, uh, planning <laughs> in the states. And then the federal government took it with the assistance yeah. of the World Bank. And according to Pera, if I remember what he said very well, and also by the National Bureau of Statistics. So that data was prepared. In terms of implementation, many of these, these states were even significantly you know, uh, involved in the implementation. They got the palliatives to take to their people. Now, take for example, Kaduna State. Kaduna State had under Erufai a social protection policy for the state. And Erufai was quoted as saying they will mine data from that same national social register. That same national social register, I repeat, was used by Lagos State to also design intervention uh, programs, right? It was also used by international agencies, UNICEF, UN Women, uh, uh, UNDP, and it was endorsed by many organizations as something that was reliable. And it captured, as of September 2022, about 753 local governments and a population, of, as, as they said, of about 52 million Nigerians coming from about maybe 14.8 households. So those are the facts. So what are the governors now saying? If they say it lacks integrity, well, they will be indicting the various state ministries that were involved. They will be indicting governors that did the uh, second time, first time, second time, Absolutely. and are no longer in office. Some of them who are still there are invariably also indicting themselves. Yes. And that is why I've raised the question that, yes, concerns may be raised about implementation because there was no transparency, particularly when that register was used for cash transfer under COVID-19 implementation of reliefs for, for people. So, and that's why Nigerians, when they hear social register, they are skeptical. Because we saw politicians taking our palliatives and hiding in warehouses, <laughs> which resulted in uh, protests. We saw cash being given out to some people, and Nigerians will look at them and say, is this one a poor person? Is this a poor household? So part of the challenge we have is this you know, uh, lack of coordination, yeah. uh, lack of transparency and accountability. Now, somebody raised the question that would the states now go and prepare new registers? Okay, they already have these social registers in their states. So those governors should go back home and take another look at it. And then I hope that this is not an opportunity by state governors to lay their hands on the palliatives, on the cash transfer, and use it for some other purposes. I saw so, so many comments S like that. That is that, the rhetoric on that, that, Dr. Martin. Now they, take it, now they take yes. it from the federal government they, they, they say they want to take ownership Absolutely. of it. They are now just acting like they didn't know what happened yeah. in the past. So these are the questions to be raised. Yes. When you talk about integrity tests, I say yeah. uh, the states are in a better position <laughs> to manage the cash transfer. The same states that, uh, that sit on uh, local government yeah. funds. Yes. Uh, Dr. Bati, they are saying it lacks integrity. Rufai, I did see one of your tweets where you mentioned that I had put up a, a question. Who are these people on this register? And nobody responded to you, right? No, no so they did, did people, did you have responses? So, so they, they responded. Yeah. So NASCO, I think they are called. NASCO. NASCO yes. has responded on two yeah. occasions. In fact, even this morning when we raised the concern, mm -hmm. they tagged the video that Arise TV did, that they interviewed one or two people that were on the social register. Mm -hmm. So, but that doesn't cut it. Okay. I think 
apart from the video, we should go further and answer the question Professor Charles Soludo asked. Is it stress test? You said integrity said test. I mean, I mean integrity yeah. test. All right. Is it integrity tested? How are we sure that some people on that social register have not died since the time they collated that social register mm -hmm. and they are still getting money? Have we looked at that data set again? Mm -hmm. Have we rejected it? How are we sure that it is everybody that got the money? The can, can we get sort of like an independent body to be able to randomly call or reach out mm -hmm. to the people that got that money? You see, because the problem in this country is the administrator of data. And I'm not sure that everywhere you give the state government that are saying, eh, 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 they will do any better. We have seen how they did palliative. Yes. Come on, Indomie! Just Indomie! Just Indomie! No, they couldn't unfair. give to people. Unfair, unfair. Indomie! All right, okay. This same state government. People were so upset in Lagos. See the way they were kicking what they... We saw those videos. We saw those videos. We saw, we saw, those saw the warehouses. We, we saw, saw all sorts. We saw those videos. So please, let us administer data well. Right. And please, shine your eye for every state you are in. Right. Start holding the state governor so yes. they must deliver. And state governors, like they say, like, is not one governor that going to pack over 2,000 uh, special <laughs> advisors. <laughs> right. put on the advisor people in social register. All right, I know. But we need to be able to have that empirical data. And some suggestion, number one. Wait, it before be you do your suggestions, okay, uh, I would time. like for Sorry. us to even just go through those recommendations by neck because additionally, the National Economic Council endorsed uh, the proposed mass deployment of uh, compressed natural gas vehicles to all states for public transportation. You know I've been talking about this, Rufai, yes. because this is encouraging. In, in Egypt alone, the Ministry of Petroleum announced uh, the conversion of about 17,000 vehicles from gasoline to buy fuel from July to October. It's amazing. Our correspondent, uh, Georgina Ndukwe Zaiga, did a great report on a transporter uh, who has converted uh, his uh, vehicle from a petrol vehicle to a compressed natural uh, vehicle. And, you know, I believe they said it costs, uh, the cost is about, uh, you know, 400 to about 450,000 naira. Now, with the pump price of oil now over 600 naira per liter, converting your vehicles to using compressed natural gas is more pocket-friendly alternative. The storage uh, equipment, that's the tank. Number one is bulletproof. It is also explosive-proof. The CNG cylinder is stored in the trunk of the boot of the car, while other connections, including the point to fill the gas, is located close to the car engine. So what is the cost difference between CNG and petrol-powered vehicles? Uh, so for the 65 CL, now it can take up to 150 kilometers, right? So uh, of distance traveled or distance covered. So and if you have to use uh, uh, petrol, so that 65 CL, if you are buying, is about 3,450 because the price for the uh, for the gas is 213 naira per cubic meter. So that is its own measurement. So if you are filling up that 65 liter, which is a 15 cubic meter, it's going to cost you a total of 3,450. I mean, I thought this was so important. I mean, we're a gas producing nation. I mean, this is the way to go, really. I thought this was important because, you know, in the Federal Capital Territory, uh, you know, Commissioner of Police, Haruna Garba on Thursday, I decried the cost of fueling patrol vehicles in yes, the nation's sir. capital. He was stating that it has become a big challenge. Uh, the commissioner also listed other challenges of the command, which includes inadequate manpower, especially drivers, and inadequate patrol vehicles to safeguard the territory. I mean, if our police, <laughs> we don't have enough fuel for our police patrol vehicles. This is a serious situation. You know, kudos to NEC for recommending uh, CNG vehicles. I think that this is the way to go really quickly. Uh, I don't know if you wanted to say something. I want to say yeah, something. Because I you think, didn't finish I think your what we need is a holistic energy plan, energy act. Yes. Apart from CNG, there are other forms of energy, energy that we are wasting. One of them is coal. We have a lot of coal in Enugu. When you look at the energy mix in South Africa, Coal takes a very big portion. Most of the electricity produced in South Africa is through coal. In 1945, 46, there about the Ivor Valley massacre that happened was in the coal plant, the colliery mine. We've got coal. Let us build coal power stations right. to be able to add to the grid. We also have a, a capacity for geothermal. There may, so what we should do is let us look at an energy mix 
they just found lithium in uh, Nasarawa state. state. Why can't we, you know, use that to be able to jumpstart our industry? Call these guys in. Yeah. We I even mean, have long-term goals. I'm just saying. No, for the coal, coal is see. Coal is I'm short. talking about lithium that you just mentioned. No, coal are, is right. Oji, Coal gas is short-term yeah. as short-term can get. Okay. Put quick investment in there. Get you see, uh, plant-based oils, e ethanol, Jatrova, Jatrova, short-term. Plant them here. Start them. There are many energy sources. So we need to even understand energy mixes in the first place wow. before we start. Sun okay. is another one. Solar. Solar. We should look at solar. Wind is another Absolutely. one. A lot of wind in, in many parts of this country. You can generate a lot from that. All right, then. Okay, then. Shall we end what's trending? Well, let's end what's trending today.